Would you like me to talk about the start of the journey? Well, it's an epic journey, so there's no better place to start than at the start. So, um, about 1985, he, he just, he's, in, he's, he's done gliding, he's had an accident, he, hate, he hates heights, he's overcome his fear, and this is part and parcel of the treatment of his fear, believe it or not. And so he gets it in his mind that he's going to fly from, from London to uh, Sydney or around the world. He's sort of got two visions in mind. Um, he doesn't know about 1988, the importance of the event. Um, and so this is a quote that he says, I have always been involved in wheezes and one of their major attractions to me is danger. So wheezes is like, you know, gung-ho uh, activities and events that really challenge you. The closer mm. I get to dying, the more alive I feel. <laughs> now, I don't, that doesn't sound like me, Jason. It probably sounds a bit like you. I don't know. So, I don't think I'd be willing to undertake a flight like that. But Yeah, so that's, <laughs> I mean, it, just, it really is a symbol of, of the strength of character that he's uh, got. Yeah. But what really grabbed my attention was the fact that Kerry Packer winds his, his way into the narrative. Kerry Packer had, uh, in 1987, sold um, Channel 9 uh, to, you know, the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of, of uh, Alan Gullible Bond. <laughs> um, and he, Kerry Packer's in London. They meet up. Kerry Packer um, is also a pilot. I never knew this, and I've read dozens. Yeah, of I would pilots. never have known that, Peter. Yeah, it flies ultralights. Anyway, so they strike up a, a you know good relationship. They bond over a meal and a few wines, I assume, um, and they then decide that they would do a round the world flight um, with the finalisation of it being on Australia Day uh, in 1988. Um, very tight time framing um, mm. from when they're talking and I'm not quite sure exactly what date they were, but it was obviously early 1987. Um, however, uh, Kerry Packer is uh, not necessarily a witness. He was obviously a very astute financial person and it only took a few weeks of financial dealings between, before the purse strings were so tight that Brian Milton f felt that it wasn't going to be a viable option from his mm -hmm. perspective, um, nor a financially remunerative one, um, being that he was a journalist, a very successful journalist, very successful TV host himself, which is obviously also goes to the rapport between the two of them. And mm. it... It fell over. Um, and, but I will read this quote out of it. Uh, Kerry Packer listened to the idea. We spent an hour telling each other, there I was, upside down, nothing on the clock, still going up stories. In the middle of one of these, Linton, being the PA of, of Kerry, uh, leant over, told me I'd got the sponsorship and go off and prepare a new budget. Um, mm. But as I said, it, it lasted six weeks after that, and the figures were about a hundred thousand pounds, according to the mm. book they were talking about, and that's a that was one hell of a lot of money back in yeah. 1987. Well, pounds as well, so you know, yeah, of course, two hundred thousand Australian dollars and multiplied by five, so you're talking at least, uh, you know, one point two, one point three million. Yeah. Um, Massive, substantial. Um, but then the, the narrative goes on, and Brian was incredibly lucky. I mean, he, he, he got offered a sponsorship, a full sponsorship from one person up front. And it only takes him a few weeks after that. Uh, and it just goes to show that, you know, it, the gung-ho attitude of those 1980s stock market mm. days was still well and truly alive. And this is just after the crash. Um, was still alive well and truly because they'll get him uh, turn up and offer him sole sponsorship. And mm. Del Getty at those days was a very um, staid uh, and trusted company. Um, 
but they came on board and offered him a full sponsorship. Um, and I'll just read a quote out of that as, uh, as well. Uh, now, who uh, we, we're talking with the, the CEO, Terry Price is his name, uh, and he was the fellow that met um, Brian uh, in Sydney on the 29th. Uh, so they were talking over breakfast and uh, Tony, Terry says, do you know we've existed as a company for a very long time? Uh, about 140 years it was, I think. Okay. Said Terry finally, we have always paid dividends, but some have thought us a trifle dull. This is such an exciting project. Let's give it a whirl. And with that, the deal was done over breakfast. Wow. Um, and sponsorship was was secured. And uh, yeah, the, the, the story then uh, unveiled and the Delgetti flyer ends up uh, as a uh, as an attraction in the primary industries pavilion in the entrance area area um, and you would think that it'd be a star attraction and you would think um, that it would have had bells and whistles uh, signifying the importance of the plane not just hanging there and I can't recall seeing anything like that well, to me it, it appeared to be a prop you know, just uh, just a prop. Maybe, maybe you know. In my mind, it was there to represent cattle mustering, or you know, rural farmers checking their fence line and and things like that. But obviously, there was this uh, odyssey, this epic story behind how it got there in the first place. And it it seems like it wasn't even really initially supposed to be there. No, well, it was certainly a bit of a uh, would appear to be uh, an afterthought. I mean. A, um, it, I don't. Well, you've all, you've got all the records. Um, I don't think it's actually mentioned at all. I didn't see it when I had the. Is there not any of the artist impressions of, of the silo in the city or anything like that? No. So, great story. The book is actually a very good read. Uh, you can get it on uh, on Tyndall. Um, I don't know how to download Tyndall. So. Uh, okay. All right. So you can you can read a digital copy of it, or you can buy yeah. it brand new or second hand from Amazon. Yep, you can indeed. And, uh, <laughs> if, um, if anyone wants to see the, the real uh, ultralight aircraft, it's, it's uh, it, I believe it's at the Museum of Applied Arts and Science in Sydney. That's yep. the, the powerhouse museum. And I would understand uh, that it's yeah. actually on display. Um, it's on display, it's suspended yeah. uh, from, from the uh, roof. So, and uh, the image as I see it looks in exactly the same condition I recall seeing it at, at Expo. It almost looks like it could have been photographed from Expo. Probably wouldn't take that much to make it fly, I suspect, um, mm -hmm. knowing how well uh, the powerhouse look after their exhibits. The next great un unveiling will be the lighting of the um, coat of arms up in the corner of Albert Street and uh, Wickham Terrace. And that I'm, I was up there last night um, uh, and the first part of the renovation uh, in that particular corner has been done. It's been done fantastically. I might actually clip some photos of that up uh, in this particular YouTube as well, just towards the end. And the uh, lots of images for, of the Dalgetty flyer on the Facebook page as well. I yeah. guess just use the search function. Well, it was quite funny how they all started to turn up. Anyway, Jason, um, I've yeah. got to feed the kids. Um, no worries. Yelling in the background. Thank you so much uh, world expo 88 facebook page for doing the interview you're welcome mr peter racy thanks for your time see you later jason bye bye those magnificent men in their flying machines they go up to the upper they go down to the upper they enchant all the ladies and steal all the seats with their up to the upper and their down to the upper.